Uh, Jacob is back again with another talk. Last time he talked about WebAssembly and more specifically WASI, but this time he's going to talk about Maco, the Apple executable file format. He went from working with a documented and open API to wanting to witness firsthand how Apple thinks differently when it comes to API and documentation. Jacob, um, sorry, the talk is Introduction to Maco, Link and Zig. Jacob, the stream is yours. Cool. Hey guys, uh, can you can everybody hear me? Yeah, is, is everything okay, Loris? Yes, absolutely. Cool. So um, yeah, I actually changed the title. I changed it to exactly what Loris specified in the email. Um, so this is harvesting macro energy for badness. Um, and as Loris said, it's quite shocking how underdocumented macro is. Um, if you if you manage to find any docs. That's official, like officially released by Apple. Um, the latest you're gonna get is from 2007. No kidding, that's like 13 years ago. So, um, so yes, I had to, I had to browse through a lot of um, blog posts. Um, obviously, I went through the linkers and loaders book, um, and everything ended in reverse engineering anyway. So, um, so yeah, it's been fun. Um, so yeah, today I'm gonna talk briefly about. Um, the exciting stuff that's actually happening in uh, supposed compiler. Um, I'll actually touch a little bit more about the architecture there, not only about Maho, just to show you how it actually works. Um, and hopefully I'm not going to bore you to death because this is um, quite boring stuff if you look at it. So um, so this is what, what you can see in front of you. This is the, um, I guess, the traditional approach to linking um, that we have in C and C++ predominantly, but also having Rust. This is basically what LVM does with LD as well. So basically we have source code going to the compiler, we generate some object code, and that, that this gets linked by some generic linker into an executable or a shared library or, um, I don't know, an archive. <laughs> then this, this gets fed into the loader and that put into the memory on your machine. So this is a very traditional view. Everything is dependent on the, the object code. I think in C or C++, this, they were called compilation units, but I'm maybe wrong here. I'm not an expert. I think Loris will know more about this stuff. Oh, by the way, you should have read his his, his and Andrew's amazing blog post about um, the um, advances in stage to compiler. So right, so this is what we have. Um, now, this is what we're trying to achieve in Zig. We decided, uh, well, I guess Andrew decided, and this is a very good idea, to put compiler and linker a little bit closer together. So um, this is what we call tightly coupled. Um, and basically with Zig, we do have an opportunity to actually generate an executable directly from the source code. So we don't actually spit out any object code before. Uh, and the same will be true for um, shared libraries. But um, we also will try to um, support the traditional view as well. So there are a couple of advantages here. Um, the main one is that we can actually optimize a lot for Zig. Um, and this is what Loris and Andrew were describing the um, blog post. So what that will mean is that um, we'll be able to do incremental linking. Um, and then hopefully in the near future or so, um, uh, hot code lo loading, was it? Swapping, I don't remember what the proper phrase for this was. Um, so the good news is you can actually experiment this stuff on Mac already. The incremental bit works. Um, there are a couple of, um, well, bugs, I guess deficiencies, you could call them. Um, but this will hopefully get weeded out soon enough. Um, right, so now on to the, the meaty bit. So what's Mac -O? What does it do? Why is it so broken and why is it so annoying? So basically, um, oh, by the way, I'm going to talk mainly about the executables. Um, Objects are slightly different structure. I mean, the general structure is pretty similar, but um, there's just one segment, and I'm not going to go into that yet or today. We're just going to focus on executables instead because that's what um, we can actually generate with stage two for simple um, Zig, Zig sources, right? Like simple Hello World or something. So in general, um, what you're going to see if you dissect 
if there is a MAHO file from stage two is that we're going to have four segments. Um, the first segment always has to be so-called page zero, followed by text and data and then link, link headed. Um, text always has to be right after page zero, um, but data and link headed, I think they can be swapped out. I didn't experiment this yet too much, but I'm pretty sure you can actually swap them out and it's going to be fine as long as you remember your offsets. Um, the important thing to remember here is that segments are mapped into memory and they have to be um, page aligned. So that's for kilobytes and both virtual memory addressing and also file offsets and that's for performance. Um, the only exception is link edit because it's the last, well, in this case, it's the last segment in the file. So you can actually not having not have it um, perfectly aligned for um, kilobytes. And file offsets, obviously, in virtual memory has to be. Um, OK, so every ma Maco um, executable starts at the address 0. Um, on Mac, everything has to be relocatable. There's no way to actually um, specify like uh, global addresses. Um, so basically, you know, you're never guaranteed where your executable is going to land in, in memory. Um, dynamic load, the DYLD can, can just basically put it anywhere or even just take it out and then put it in a different address. OK, so page zero segment, um, a little bit about this. Uh, this might not seem as very important, but it is if you don't set the page zero to be four gigabytes in memory, in, in, in virtual memory, um, dynamic loader will kill your application just like this. It won't even care. It has to be four gigs. So it always starts at zero in virtual memory. It's it's four gigabytes, um, and it's actually when it, when it comes to file offsets, it's zero bytes. Um, it makes it a little bit tricky when analyzing with like OTool or MacroView, which I will show later on, because you know because we're addressing four gigabytes, we're already starting at an uh, insane hex number. But, um, you can get used to it, right? I hope. So the next thing is the text segment. Um, so this one always starts after the page zero. So at four, four gig, it has to be page aligned uh, in a virtual memory and in file for performance. Um, what else? Um, uh, yeah, so in memory, it starts at four gig, as I said. When it comes to file offset, it starts at zero. This has interesting repercussions, which I will get back to later when I'll show you the header and stuff. Um, oh, actually, I've got it here. Right. So it actually contains the macro header, load commands, and, and obviously the compiled machine code. So that's the read all of it. Now, this is very annoying because of the way we have the code generation, the, the linker um, built up and, and designed in Zig. We, like Andrew designed this really clever way of actually finding free space for different sections and segments in the file. And because Maho has got certain rules that has, have to be followed, like this one, you have to guarantee that this text segment is, is, is the first one actually spans in file from zero onwards. Um, so currently, I basically I hacked it in the way that it gets created first, and you set the alignment to be for uh, for KB, so actually we'll, 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 we'll stretch enough, but um, this has to be reworked. So, okay. So moving on, this is what the um, um, the header and the load commands look like. So we have the, the macro header, um, it's feed FACF, that's the magic number for 64-bit uh, Intel macro executable. Um, it used to be feed face, as far as I remember, that was, that was for 32-bit. Uh, which had a nice ring to it. Um, so then we have, then we follow with load commands uh, for segments. Those are LC segment 64, but that's not really important. It's just a, it's just a technicality. We have things like LC simtap for sim simple table and so on and so forth. Um, and then finally, after we have all the load commands and some padding, we have. Uh, um, Jacob, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Um, I think we lost your desktop. Did you? Uh, yeah, uh, in this last slide. I oh. I refreshed the page, but I don't think I'm able to... Right now? To find you. Anything? No, I think you oh. have to... Okay. 
Re let me launch it then. Yes, sorry for yeah. the interruption. Not as okay. Okay, let me... Wait, I called you again. The desktop. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> so where did I lost everybody? Uh, oh, I have to wait to copy that. Uh, that's the third link, by the way, Loris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, please. Do. Any luck? Uh, yeah, it seems to be working. I wonder why it likes to corrupt a little bit, though. Corrupt? What do you mean, corrupt? Yeah, it, uh, the, um, the static image bugs out a little bit in the corners. Uh, I don't know. Mm. That, that's an interesting bug. Okay, so, so where, did I, where did I lose you guys? The text segment is... Did, did, did you see that? Did yes, we did see it. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. just the slide where, that you were in, uh, the last one. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so right. So come back to it. Um, the text section, that's where we put the... The generated machine code. Um, so the bread, the bread and butter of your of your of your um, executable. Um, I got some trivia here written down for you. Um, if you use something like uh, O-Tool or um, Mac OV or something, you're going to be presented with this glorified star address, which is the symbol VM address, and then the symbol name. That's basically taken from the string table, and then um, um disassembled machine code back to the assembly okay so um right there we have data segment um traditionally you would have things like c strings data arrays things like this and zig this is very interesting and this actually took me quite a bit to get my hand he head around we actually will create a global offset table and put it in here um, i'm going to get to what it actually is it's not global offset table in the standard sense. Um, it's much cooler. So we're going to get back to this. Again, as with all the segments, everything has to be page aligned. And then finally, we have the um, link edit. This is like this unwanted child of my wife. I think, I don't know. I, I don't know why it's, it's got so many quirks. Um, so this basically contains everything that you need to pass to the um, dynamic linker to actually for it to load the program into memory and execute it. Um, and if you forget about something, then you're screwed. So um, it's highly underdocumented. Uh, it doesn't actually have any sections. Um, so basically, when I was showing the section, like the text section, what you would normally have, uh, you have the, the load command for the segment, and then underneath it, like embedded, you would have any of the sections that you actually have within the segment. But with link edit, you don't have sections. You have other load commands that are sections. Bizarre. Um, difficult to work with, but hey, this is what it is. So, right, so the cool stuff. So how do we actually link in Zig? Um, and this is in stage two. I'm not talking about the LD or anything like this. So given some generated machine code, and this is what's actually happening. And if you go into the Zig source code, that source link, and then um, a whole similar stuff is actually happening in ELF, just that it ends up in different bits in the ELF. Um, executable, but the general structure I think is pretty similar. So what we do basically when we get generated machine code, we get or generate, create, um, index into the symbol table, which we'll use to um, reference that in the future. And then we also create an entry in the global offset table. And the entry in the global offset table is surprise, surprise, the address of the symbol. So basically this, if I get it right, this is basically what makes incremental linking in Zig this much easier than what you would have if you were working with LLD or anything, uh, like any, any of the traditional linkers. Because if anything changes, and I'll actually do, I'll demo that stuff later on. If anything changes, then um, basically you update uh, the global, the, the offset in the global offset table. You don't have to actually you know, shuffle around everything, like all the sections and things like this. OK, so in this case, we have, for example, if main was under the address of um, 
three FO, obviously at four gig, um, then we would have it in the Lendian order in the, the global asset table in the God section of data segment, right? Okay. So moving on. So this is um this is a tiny example of actually what it would look like if you were uh, to write out um, basically um, printf using um, Cisco and assembly on 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 Mac. Um, so Mac has got this weird, or maybe not weird. Some people say it's actually clever way of addressing, uh, or actually numbering Cisco's. Um, in this case, this massive number, which actually I don't know how much is that. What is this? It's like two million four, I think something like this, isn't it? That's the um the number for um for write. Um, basically, then we have which file descriptor we want to write to, which is one for stood out. And then we're going to have a pointer to end the standard way, which is basically the hello world here. And then the length of the of the string is 14. Um, OK, I'm clobbering. I, yeah, I think memory is the only thing. Um, I think as far as I remember reading on Mac OS, you don't actually clobber anything else. Um, so then this gets generated. And I'm actually going to show that as well. Hopefully, we're going to have time. Uh, what? happens here is that we generate this 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 opcode here with this fancy looking address uh, this address is actually taken i think from an actual example uh, so bear with me here um and what the hell is it right um it doesn't look like what you would i guess expect from uh let's say ld i think in this case you would basically be loading a c string from data section but in this case we are actually Pointing to something, and this address is the address in, in global auth table, which then in turn points back into the text section, which will hold this um, chunk with hello world in it. So hello world does not end up in the data segment, it actually ends up in the text segment, which um, for some, I guess, might be bizarre. I mean, it, it took me a while to actually get my head around this. So we put all um, all the all all the text blocks, I guess you can call them, and actually I think this is what we call them in code, in the text segment, and then we refer to them via the global author table, the data segment. Okay, I, I know it sounds a bit scary, but it actually isn't, and it's really smart, and it works great so far. Okay, so right, cool. I can actually show, show some stuff now. Can you see this? It's probably too small, is it? Ah, uh, yep. Maybe a little bit uh, bigger would be better. Okay, cool. Fire. Well, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, as I was saying, this is basically um, this is the bit of the code. Well, part of it I was actually showing to you the print bit, which starts in line eight. Um, we have print and we have exit. Um, Exit also has got a funky number for the Cisco and Mac. Um, this is not, I guess, what we would expect on a Mac OS because we are linking into uh, a lib system, which is basically the libc on, on Mac OS. But um, I'm pretty sure we don't have externs working yet in stage two. Plus, I didn't get my head, head around how to actually do this. So basically, this is the same way, the same we test. Maho the same way we would test Elf. It's just that obviously it's adapted to um to to to, to the way that Mac OS expects it and stuff. So having this bit code here, what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna show it to you like I think Andrew was showing in one of the videos at some point. Um so I've already got stage two pre-built and it's gonna be with um um logs enabled for linking stage, just to show you how it works. Um, when it comes to the incremental linking, I think we can actually squeeze out a lot more. Currently, we are overwriting a lot, of, like regenerating a, a lot of sections and stuff, which we don't have to. But I didn't get, I, I, I didn't get to to that part yet. We can actually store some offsets in a smart way and actually only only um, basically update some bits, like um, symbol table or something, or or the um, LC sim tab load command. 
right? So we have Zig here, and this is um, freshly compiled um, stage to build from today. Oh, we can have Varn. Right, so let me build the exa, which is the hello Zig, but let's do it incrementally. So this was the first build. And just to verify that it actually works, let me go to examples. Examples. Okay, we have something here. Cool. Let's run it. We have hello world. Cool. Now, let me edit source file. So, for example, for testing, I actually like to stick in error code of 42 because that's the best number in the universe. And then we're just going to do update. And as you can see, Actually, let me scroll back up. In the first instance, we had a lot of stuff happening. We have we have we've been um, allocating symbols, um, writing writing obviously the offset table entries and so on and so forth. And then in this bit, as you can see, actually we don't do that much stuff anymore. We did generate a couple more symbols like except anonymous nine, ten, and eleven, but there wasn't that much more. And let's see if this actually worked. So now what we should Get here, okay. There was an error code. Let's get it out. 42, perfect. So let's have some more fun with this, right? So we can actually, um, we can actually print twice, right? That should be cool. Let's go back up, okay. We're actually updating even less now, perfect. So now what we should expect is actually hello world printed twice. Awesome. So this is exactly what I think Andrew was showing on, on, on Linux. Um, and guess what? You can actually experiment this on your Mac as well. Um, that's plus three inches, what? 17, I think. Arithmetic is awful. Right, update. Oh, right. And this is what I, what, I, what, I, what I meant. We actually do a lot of overwriting here, but I'm pretty sure we are regenerating some of the text block symbols. Um, Cool. Um, so this bit already works, which is great. Um, as I said, there is a couple of things that should be ironed out for uh, it's ready for some serious testing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not even ready for testing yet. Um, the good news is we do have some basic tests in um, Zik already. So basically, whenever you tweak something, um, the um, incremental linking will get tested. OK, right, so let me get back. To, oh, before we get on, so if you're on a Mac, there is this cool utility called Mac of you. Um, it's like this nice graphical user interface on top of Auto. So you could normally, well, if, if you feel like it, you can basically um, you can, you can run Auto on a macro binary to actually print, for example, the load commands and things like this. Um, I actually can't remember how you disassemble. I think it was DV. Maybe not. Give me a wee second. Oh, right. So these are all the symbols that we actually have in the text section, including the actual print. With um, yeah, I should probably turn them into knobs. I didn't get time. Like I, I didn't have time to do that. Yeah, then we have exit as well. Well here, and then we have oh up to here, and then we have some. Well, should have some knobs as well. And the same thing, you can actually uh, see in my view, but just in a nicer um well format. Okay, we have the um, the header. We have load commands. Oh, and uh, I was telling you guys. So basically, this this is what I meant about um, sections being embedded within um, segment load commands. So we have the text section where we actually put all the assembly or machine code in. Uh, we have the section for our global also table. And then guess what? Well, link edit never gets any sections. Uh, but what you get instead is like all the other load commands that are like the facto sections for um, the link editor, which is bizarre, it's stupid. I don't know why anybody would create this. Um, this is 
in like ironically this um lc load dilip load command is quite important and this is what um this is what we're missing one of the main things that we're missing from ld to be able to cross compile um to mac os from any other um, operating system um, but ld doesn't do that uh, for some reason um you would need to specify manually they want to link against lip, uh, lip system so l system but then again if you're not on a mac os ld will crap itself saying i can't find it so need to wait a little bit i guess um okay cool i guess we can oh no right one more thing i'm going to show you guys so i've got i've got um a little linux box running here which has got so this is on arc and we have um and this is on intel as well uh with some well relative new kernel so what i'm going to do here i'm going to show you that actually i wasn't talking crap well i am talking crap but not, you know i wasn't lying at least um that you can actually generate the same stuff Uh, like on Linux, cross compile to Mac with our stage two, and it's going to be fine. So that's Helzig. Target. Four. Okay, that looks promising. So, cool. So now let me. Very Quickly grab that. Uh, what did I miss? Really? Oh, crap. Sorry about this. So we have the hello cross. Oop. And if we run it, it should run. And it does. Um, and if we're going to open it here, you will see that the thing that I was, point, like I was pointing out, which is the, um, yeah, there you go. See? So we actually do insert it. And this is what I'm, if you were following the conversation on GitHub, this is what Andrew was saying that. Uh, it's pretty cool because we are already one step ahead of LLD because we do allow for cross completion from the start. Um, right, so I can now I can get back to slides and talk a bit more about some other stuff. Right, so um, it took me quite a while to figure out what the minimum number of load commands uh, and sections uh, is for the uh, macro executable to be actually loaded properly by um, DYLD. And it turns out that one crucial bit, which is also very well documented, it's quote unquote, right, ironically, is um, the export info. And what I mean by export info is actually export try. So in Basically, in link edit segment, we need to put in some information for the dynamic loader to to um, to tell them exactly what we're trying to export here. And for executables, so well, the small executables that should be pretty easy because we export either star or main. Uh, at the moment, actually, if you if you try to export main, the um, the linker will not work because we have it hard coded for start. Anyway, there's only one symbol. Um, there's one trick. Well, actually, but um. When I was porting the um, export try to, to Zig, I thought that we're actually we should have a proper export try generation algorithms in place because this will be needed for shared libraries as well. Um, and it's better to get it right 99% from the start than to get something hard coded in first and then you know work our way on backwards. So the cool thing about this, and this is also the very tricky bit, is that the export try that the Mac expects or the DYLD expects is actually um, so it's a it's a tree structure, it's a prefix, prefix tree, 
but um, it has to be serialized and ULAP 128 encoded. And this actually makes it quite tricky to do. Um, so basically, okay, right. Before we actually get on to ser serialization, I'm gonna show you basically what the, um, the try looks like. So we always have the root. Then let's say we insert symbol mh execute header. Uh, if you start dissecting macro, macro um, executables, you're gonna see it quite a lot, especially um, if you use um, something that uses LVM underneath or or um, LD, DYLD, no LD, I think, LD64, can't remember, um, on Mac. And um, as far as I know, this, Symbol allows other programs like debugger, so maybe something else to actually access the um, the macro information. Uh, we currently don't insert it, but we probably should. So we insert it. We only have one um, terminal node where we insert it with one label, which is basically the entire symbol. Then we want to insert main, and we have this clever trick here. Um, this is not like the, um, the export try in, in macro is not. I guess like the simplest try you would get in your um, computer science books because we don't, uh, we basically compress the labels as, as much as we can. So instead of be, them being um, like characters, we actually have entire strings as labels on edges. So then if we insert main, we actually split the um, underscore from the previous label, we insert a node inside, kind of splice it. This becomes a non-terminal node, and from this node we have two children, which is the um, one underscore mh execute header, and then we have main. So so far so good. Now before I show you the serialization bit, we need to go very quickly uh, through the ULEP one to encoding. Um, as far as I know, this is pretty common in, in, in debugging, writing um, the debugger information as well. It stands for unhind little engine base one to eight. So if we're given this number and hex 765, that's what we get in binary. Um, ULEP 1 to 8 encoding is pretty straightforward. What we do, we, we pad it until we get a multiple of seven bits. So in this case, I think it's 14, it should be 14. Then we split into groups of seven. Um, then we set the most significant bit to one except one group. And basically, this is what we get. Um, that's the um, ULEP 1 to 8 encoded. 765. Um, and this is quite important because, well, export try, I think, except for one information, is everything else is ULAP 1 to encoded, which makes it perfect, as you'll see in a minute. Right, so let's say we're given this export try. Um, this is also, I think, one of the tests that we have in, in ZIG for the export try itself. Um, this is what basically the encoded values look like without padding. Um, so we have a shitload of bytes. Um, oh, I should also note that labels are always um, uh, null, uh, like set, like null byte terminated. They always have to be. So that's why we have bytes two and three. We can actually see only um, underscore, but there's also a, a null byte. Okay, so what the heck does it mean? So basically, the first bit, the first byte, sorry, is the length of terminal node. Um, if it's zero, then that means it's not terminal node. In this case, it's a root. We always start with a zero in the first byte. So we can draw a root. That's that's basically this is what would happen if we we're parsing it um, from like if we were given a stream of bytes. This is what happens when we actually parse it into a try. So as to like if we generate, I guess, then we get number of branches leaving this node. Um, in this case, it's going to be one, so that's where we can draw. Then we get the label, which is just the underscore. Now, this this is the bit that's actually really difficult to generate. Um, so from the try, when you go into the, the bytes, so this is the offset from the start of the try to the beginning of the node that we're actually pointing at in this, in this um, edge. It's simple here because we have only one edge. So naturally, it's going to be the next byte. Okay, and again, zero means that this is a non-terminal node, um, but in this case, we have actually two edges now. So we have mh execute header, and guess what? Now this next bit is like in the previous case, offset to the node from this branch. So this is hex 21, which is the byte 33, and 
we will actually do like a well, it's almost like a recursive call, it's not really, but we're gonna actually jump to that byte. And then we're gonna parse more information about the next node. And if there's more edges, we're just gonna keep descending until we reach a terminal node. And we're gonna go one step up and then descend in the next direction and so on and so forth and until we get the entire um um tryout. Um so this is like the standard that first search, I guess. Um right, so in this case, as you will see, byte 33, we do have a terminal node because the byte is non-zero. It's actually two. This points to two bytes worth of information. So as you'll see in a minute, so we have a terminal node. Cool. Um, number of edges leaving it is zero. And the um, export information, this is the, um, the stuff that um, DYLD needs. So this is the export flags. I'm not going to go into that. Actually, I don't even know what some of them mean yet. Um, there is no docs, obviously, there's only some information in header files and you have to figure out what the hell. Um, I had a look in LD, they do have some bits implemented, not all of them yet. So um, I guess we're just going to exchange information if some, some, you know, someone gets somewhere first. Um, and then the important bit here, we also have virtual memory address offset. So the offset is actually from the start of the text section. And in a virtual memory. Um, and for the sake of argument here, I assume that MH execute header starts at zero. So basically it's at four gigabytes offset zero. Okay, so we now we go back up, we then go to the next label, which is main, and then um, the offset to the next node is actually 25 in hex, which is 37. So um, the size of that one is three bytes. So what that means here is like again, byte 38 says that we don't have any any children. Um, oh, but if, we, if it's a terminal node, because I'm pretty sure that that's going to be one of the questions, if it is a terminal node, you can still have children as well. Um, this would appear probably if you had some um, a, a proper full substring of a different string, like I don't know, underscore mh or underscore underscore mh and then underscore underscore mh execute header, then you would have two terminal nodes. But anyway, so bytes 13 and 40 is ULIP 128 encoded a value for the offset. So it's 18, 20, which basically gives you an hex 1000. So we can expect this symbol, which is main, at um, four gigabytes plus 1000 hex. Okay, so um, cool. We got to the end of it. Now let me show you uh, what it actually looks like in real life, and this unfortunately is going to be quite boring because we have, as I said, we have only one um, symbol, and that symbol is start, but we do have, so the next node is actually at the next address, terminal size is 3 because we have one byte for flags, and we have two bytes for symbol offset, which is 1000. And if we're going to get back here to the, oh, sorry, to that section, you're going to see it. Yeah, there you go. See, the address is actually here. So that's the, um, the start address for start. Um, so that would be it about my whole. Um, I think I did ask if anybody wanted to see if we can actually cross compile with stage one. And I think C code um from say linux to mac and this is actually functional right now except for the fact that um the generated maho executable misses a couple of things um if there is interest I, I can't see the stream but if you guys want to see it i can quickly show you this stuff as well so loris is there an interest in that so basically using the zxcc to cross compile um c code say on linux to mac Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay, we have a yes. I, well, I think that if okay. you offer free stuff to people, they're gonna take it, of course. <laughs> yeah, we have. We, okay, there are a lot of yeses. Yes, let's go. So this is this is like. Uh, so yeah, you, you can feel free to talk to talk here as well. This yeah. is um like a freebie. This is um just something that we um like Andrew and myself merged in recently. So um, I actually managed to um dig out the bare minimum set of headers for the libc to actually get it to work. 
uh, and I'm sure that there is one bit that's bro broken. I think we could fix it. We could actually, we could patch it ourselves, but um, I'm not sure what's better here, whether to wait for LVM to do it, if they will ever do it, or, or I don't know, stage two or something. But um, basically, let's go to examples. And this is on, we are on Linux, okay? So we have this tiny bit of C here, and we can, in build bin, it's like I have actually the um, state run. Stage two cannot compile C just yet, um, especially with the Mac holding curve. I'm working on it, but it's not there yet. So we can do this, and this will actually work in the sense that I will compile. Oh, sorry, it should be Mac OS. No. Okay, so well, check it out. So this is a Mac OS executable. It's got those flags, which I'm pretty sure they do signify that it might be a mistake there. Um, so if I will copy it over, check any out to here, call it this way, why not? Right, so let's just verify that it's actually fine. Ah, maybe it's just how um how Linux actually prints stuff out. Right. Um right, you're gonna be greeted with this cool thing. So um that's pretty unfortunate. And this actually is not a difficult bit to fix. Um actually I am not I'm not gonna go through this here because it's gonna take that's too much time and then I have to actually get calculator out to calculate the offsets where to insert the load command and stuff. But I'll show you that this isn't too difficult to actually fix by comparing with oh I have right and um I'm on Mac right here and if I compile it um with stage one without specifying the target so I'm actually gonna link with the native native libc it will work obviously right so everything is cool so now, oop, sorry. Now let's have a look, quick look, what the difference is. Just to show you guys that actually the, 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 it, it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to fix. So uh, where are we? Cross, right. So on the left, we have the executable that actually works. And on the right, we have the one that actually compiled, but doesn't get loaded. So the first thing, if you notice, in this case, we do have this infamous, I guess by now, it's like this unwanted child, everybody, is the LC load dilib. And in this case, we don't. And um, as far as I remember, this is because um, LOD, which we actually use in state one, to link is not allowing you to actually link or specify that load command without passing in the, um, um, the, um, the L system flag which then actually LD, I think, checks uh, runtime, whether you actually you are on the Mac. If you're not, then it's going to just, just trip. OK, so this is the first bit that's actually missing here. And then the next one, which is pretty obvious, is that if you go into the symbol table, you're going to have a look at the DYLD stub binder. Uh, this is the symbol that actually we include uh, in stage two as well. And it's pretty easy to include. You have to specify it as in the um, so-called undefined symbol because this is the symbol that's provided to you by a DYLD when, when your executable is loaded in memory. Um, but all you have to do is basically specify the library or the null uh, where you would expect to find it. In this case, it's libsystem. So let's give me a second to the symbol table. And if you notice here, we don't have it because we are not specifying the LC load dilib uh, as to link to um, libsystem vdilib, right? So this is the first thing we would need to fix. So the easy fix would be here to basically just do this. Um, obviously, we, we would need to add the um, the um, LC load dilib and then tweak the Mac 64 header with the additional size. And hopefully, we wouldn't actually run out of space and overwrite the um, text section. And then the next thing that's actually missing, and actually, well, two things. If you go into the um, dynamic loader info, we have binding info, the opcodes. And if you see closely here, um, again, this should be 
um, dialog one. So that's the um, data should be 11 is 30 as it was. And then the next thing is in the um, lazy binding info. Um, yep. So it's almost there. All, all we need to do here is actually open the hex editor and add the, um, the bit for the LC load dialog. And it would actually work. I can guarantee this because um, I managed to get it to work like the other day when I was experimenting with the stuff. Okay. Well, yep. Um, so, um, a bit of hackery, I guess, <laughs> towards the end. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you have anything else uh, to demo or do you want to move to the Q&A? Um, I think we can move to the q and I think I bored everybody enough. <laughs> <laughs> as it is, so um, there's more coming, but um, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like good wine, right? You have to like you have to open it, like, breathe and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Um, okay, so let's um uh, open the floor to questions. So if you have a question um for Jacob, please uh either you can write it in Twitch chat. Uh, make sure to add me if you can at Christoph uh, underscore T. Uh, if you are in Discord, you can also use, I don't know, the, the voice uh, text channel if you want. Please tag me also in there. And uh, this applies both to the Showtime Discord or to the Zig Programming Language Discord server. And I'm also on IRC. If you are watching, you don't like signing up for accounts on services that you barely use. So if you... Uh, if you can type in Twitch chat, feel free also to send a message in the Zig um, IRC channel on Freenode. That's fine too. Uh, in the meantime, so while people start thinking of questions, uh, Jacob, uh, let me let me start. So, uh, mm -hmm. just a well, actually, let me start with how are you? How are you doing? Um, I uh, tiring times, right? So, how are you uh, holding up? Uh, good. Everything is fine. You know, yeah. Um, uh, given the time, yeah, yeah. It's it's um, <laughs> it's interesting out there, I guess. Let mm -hmm. me put it that way. So um, I guess we just have to work with what we have. So yeah, all, all good, I guess. Okay. Healthy. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so I guess my first question would be: is, uh, Let me make sure I understood correctly. So the um the uh prefix tree that uh well sorry the the radix tree that um is is used to uh, store symbols it's just one um uh the entire tree is just one uh, every node is slided out next to the, to the other right next to the next so it's one contiguous chunk of memory and it has references uh, to w within that space of memory, right? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, yeah. So how hard was it to find out all the information that you needed to make stuff work? Like how... how uh, oh, it took me a month. It took, it took me month. a month of actually, yeah, like going back and forth. So I started doing executable and I gave up. And we, I went back to, oh, because the, the other difficult bit is, um, I think that was one of the questions that was asked later, but um, I'm going to um, get ahead of myself here. Um, the way we organize stuff in the text section is different from everybody else. Right. Um, so obviously there is no, like it's difficult to compare. So the only way you can compare is with something like ELF, or you could with ELF or I don't know, um, PE or something like this. But obviously they have different structures, so you can't really compare one to one with, with Mako. Um, and if you were generating from C or I don't know from um, state runs egg, because they use LD or a different linker underneath, you get different results. Right. So even reverse engineering was quite difficult because things were not the same in the same place. Um, and there is no docs, as you said. There is absolutely no docs. I can't believe it. It's like the only docs you have are some bits of sentences. They're not even like full sentences and header files in like different open sourced projects by Apple. A bit of here, a bit of there. 
um, some 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 good blog posts by people who actually did take the time to actually you know analyze how, what the hell is going on. And that's it. So it took me a whole month going back and forth between executable and object um, uh, file format to get at the bare minimum that actually worked. Um, but when it did, it was cool. So, um, I had to, I, even though it was hacked. Like I didn't even have the export try right there. I just everything had manually specified, but it was working. So that means I could actually compare against something. Um, so that was good, but it was an entire month of hell, basically. I see. I see. Awesome. Uh, well, I can tell you from my point of view, I can thank you personally because I'm looking forward to try this stuff on, and I'm I'm one of yeah, those lazy can. people that uses Mac OS, so. Thank you very much for you for your hard work. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, before I start reading questions from uh, people, I see that there are already a few. Um, uh, I just wanted to point out one thing. So uh, for the people that uh, aren't aware, um, Jacob is is part of the core team, right? You were invited by Andrew. What was it? A month ago. Something like this, yeah. More or less, yeah. Uh, it must have been, yeah. Yeah, uh, under COVID. Like time becomes a relative concept, much more than usual. Very much so, yes. <laughs> yeah, but so also so congratulations uh, for that. Thank like you. people in chat, please clap, slap uh, something for. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, for Jacob's uh, initiation. So uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see uh, questions. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I understood you correctly, but why are strings in the text section section and not in data? That's from Zakus. Right. So this is the um. What I mean by string here was the um pointer to end. So um, I'm not sure whether all the strings will be and like or organized by like this. But basically, if we have a look here again, um, this string here. And I'm not an expert in this at all. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm learning as I go along here. So um, when we do um, point, point, pointer to end this bit, the um, hello world, this bit here gets its own text block that we basically refer to back. Uh, a text block as in it actually lands in the text segment as a new symbol, and then we refer to it via the also table. Um, the pretty. I'm actually, yeah, so um, this is meant to help with incremental linking because if we do, so for example, if I do, um, oh, wait, give me a wee sec. So if we had this, oh, let's do it this way 15. And if we did, take the with watch. Oh, and obviously it should work. And that if we now tweaked it, what's happening inside? Let's say we tweak it to this. Um, the change should be minimal because we're actually we are reusing the data. Obviously, it's quite big here, but it shouldn't be. This should actually this should not generate a lot of bits here, um, because what happens there is we are. Reusing, I don't know whether it was seen there, actually allocating a new symbol, but we should reuse the text block that we already had the string in. So it should be able to grow. And then um, the other bit is that if even if we do this, we basically in the um, assembly, we don't refer, we basically refer with an address that doesn't really change, which is the address into the global author table. Like in here, it's if I switch to virtual addressing, um, 41008, which is here. That's the data high here. Um, so this potentially should not change um, this address because it will, we will always point to this um, chunk in the global asset table. But what will change in the global asset table, because we know exactly the size, which will always be an address, uh, we can then swap the address in the global asset table to the new symbol. 
and I'm pretty sure this was happening underneath recompile with a longer string or something. So I think that was one of the main motivations was that we don't have to, and I'm not sure how we would actually manage that if we had C strings only, I guess. We could, yeah, we'd need to actually, if we had C strings, then, yeah, okay, so we would have, we'd need to tweak this text block, which then would mean that we'd probably need to overwrite the entire, um, well, at least this text block here, or even the entire text, seg text section, which is not very ideal, right? In this case, we actually, because we didn't touch, um, the functional code bit here, which um, which is basically print. We didn't actually do anything. Oh, actually, it should be here. No, yeah. Um, we didn't touch print at all, uh, which means uh, these addresses stay. We always point to the same cell in the global asset table. All we did tweak was the length of the string, which basically needed another um, um, another um, symbol. In the, tech, in the text segment, which we then append. So in this text block here in print, we don't have to swap the addresses because we swap them around here and the global asset table. So I guess that's why. So this allows us to actually do um, smarter incremental linking that was, uh, was done with compilation units in C and C++, where you have to overwrite the entire um, like result and executable. I don't know if it makes sense. Hopefully it does. Mm -hmm. um, because this is like in direction, I guess. Yes. Well, I think that if uh, Zakus uh, needs further uh, clarification, he'll write another question or. Uh, yeah, or, or, or yeah, he can just ping me on Discord or something and I'll be happy to explain. Yeah. Um, so, next question uh, What part of the self hosted compiler needs the most help, uh, slash, is easiest to get started? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I picked, I picked Linker and I was like, oh my God, what I do? <laughs> um, so I, I think every single bit needs that. Uh, we, we have a lot of code missing, uh, which would be cool to get into. Oh, I should probably say I'm pretty excited, even though I spent a lot of money on this. Um, I got into the uh, Universal App Quick Start, no wait, Universal App Quick Start program, I think that's what Apple calls it. So I'm going to get the Mac Mini with ARM chip in it. So, and this is, I actually, when I was applying for it, I said I'm only going to do Zig on it, like um, development of the Zig compiler and stuff. And they were nice enough to actually say, yeah, that's, that's cool. So I'll be trying to actually get the stuff ported to ARM as well on a Mac OS um, in preparation of, you know, for, for the big day when Apple Silicon, Silicon comes out. Nice. Yeah. Um, so there is, obviously ARM is missing. Um, Joachim has been doing some great stuff there. But we miss this. We 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 miss a lot of code in different places. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. You basically, I think, you can just open source code and just find it to do <laughs> in the in the main source. Yeah, uh, I, the directory. So, um, I think maybe another like a recommendation from a social point of view would be to uh, get a hold of Andrew. Uh, whenever he yeah. after the zero point seven release, uh, and after his uh, um, you know more stable situation given uh, mm -hmm. recent events, uh, and I think he'll be happy to uh, to direct people towards uh, a, a easier starting point. Yeah, definitely, that's a very good idea. Yep. Um, so, question by uh, Iridescent Rose: uh, How do you get into developing the compiler? Anything that helped uh, get started? Um, so, once upon a time, and that was ages ago, I read a bit of the, um, the Red Dragon book. Quite outdated. It's very outdated, even. So this helped a bit. Um, I think with Zig, we're in a superb situation because. Zig code is very well written, like all of it, like all the bits are really, really well written, really well thought out. So you're given some, you know, real life examples right there. Um, and if you're not scared of actually experimenting and see how it breaks uh, with a bit of assembly, I'm, I'm not very good with assembly myself. I had to read a lot of the, like a lot of the stuff about the opcodes for Intel. And, 8664 when I was doing this stuff just to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, but this definitely helps. Um, I think we have some really good guys in Discord 
um, who can really help out, you know, a lot of stuff. Um, and for the linkers, yeah, the linkers and loaders, this book is pretty good. Um, even though it doesn't cover anything from macOS, the general ideas are, are, are pretty good. Oh, the um, Andrews and Loris' uh, latest blog post on, I think it was like, we're leaving an LVM or something, something like this. Uh, it's really good. It doesn't really go into the technical details, but it, 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 it's got a lot of stuff like hidden, like if you read behind the lines, it, it actually, it, it's got lots of information that can get you going with stage two. Um, yeah, I think that's a good answer. Um, I, one, maybe, uh, thought that I can share uh, from my very ignorant point of view, I have to say I have never uh, contributed to the compiler itself. I contributed to the standard library, but I, I never ventured the compiler in main part. Uh, well, I, I guess my, the main part is ignorance, but the, the second biggest part is that because it's C++ and I'm not touching C++, but this doesn't apply with the self hosted compiler, right? And right. <laughs> And uh, one thing that um, really helped me uh, learn something that I, I never knew really anything about in my case, which was the uh, event loop, how event loops work. I've been using async await in higher level pro programming languages like um, all my professional life, basically. Uh, but I, I, I knew that the event loop is somehow juggling multiple things at the same time, but how the juggling happens and the uh, curious... Um, constraints that you have to respect or actually that you can even break uh that uh in with knowledge of how everything works mm -hmm. uh, i never had that and in my case what helped me was uh uh, uh clone a copy of zig uh got out everything from inside the implementation of the event loop and start filling in everything back again to see to make it work with like you start with a super simple program which by the way now this is another amazing thing the beautiful thing of zig is that lazy um lazy evaluation of code allows you to only work only implement the in part of the interface mm -hmm. that you actually yep. need to make a code sample compile so in my case as long as my uh, test uh, program was simple enough. I didn't even need to care about subsystems, uh, subparts of the event loop that that uh, that you would otherwise need. So, for example, I I had a uh, script sample that just opened a TCP connection. So you have to implement the connection part. You don't have to implement maybe a part about files or about other syscalls that can be async. And that's, I think, a superpower that uh, you can probably leverage in certain situations to um, uh, dive, well, not dive, but I guess slowly submerge yourself into uh, the well, into the the problem that you want to uh, solve and understand better. So that's a, that's a great feature. Yeah, that's for sure. And that's actually a good point. Uh, ironically, this actually tripped me up the first time I started doing Zig because I was expecting the compiler to start shouting at me if I missed something. Uh -huh. <laughs> it turns out I wasn't using it and it wasn't even really compiled. I was like, oh, okay. So, um, but yeah, but that's a, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, just try and experiment. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, very well-written code in Zig. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so why people are saying, uh, yeah. sorry, I'm just going to add that. No, no, why, no, sorry, please. That, better to look through the test cases and the code itself because it's kind of self-documenting. Right? Obviously, we need higher level documentation as well. But for the meantime, if you want to get um, deeper into how the things work and where to contribute, if you read the code, then you just, first of all, you're going to you know, learn how to write idiomatic zeg. And second of all, you're going to learn um, about the bits that you want to tweak from the code itself. So this is pretty cool. Right. Um, so, uh, the was, uh, Sobstone was mentioning, I think you answered this already, but just in case you want to expand a bit more. So Sobstone was saying that, uh, uh, Rui, the creator of, uh, LLD, um, recommended Sobstone on Twitter, uh, the book Linkers and Loaders, the, the same that you mentioned. Um, so Sobstone was asking if you would recommend it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got a copy myself now, <laughs> like a, a physical, so. So yeah, for sure. It's it's um it's also quite dated, I think. 
Um, but it's not too long, and it's got a very good perspective on stuff, so it's it's definitely well worth it. Um, point of caution here, though, that um, we are breaking ground here with uh, you know the self-hosted compiler um, because it's so tightly coupled that we are doing stuff in an unorthodox way. That I'm pretty sure some of the guys would um, basically um, you know hold us for. Um, but hey, if this is the way, if this is the way we can actually approach and, and achieve um, hot code reloading and incremental linking, then why not? Yep. Um, next question from a root dev. Um, this might be out of scope, but I'm wondering if we know if Zig uh, 0.7 will work out of the box with macOS Big Sur. Um. Will it? I don't think so. I think we're miss. That's a very good question, actually. Well, I, 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 I think the question is not about um, I know. the compilation, well, right? It's normal. It isn't, and it, it isn't but um, it can't. Well, it, it does. Count, well, it, it touches upon it, right? A little bit, at least. Mm -hmm. um, um, I want to say no. Unfortunately, no. Although, I know that Frank Dennis, uh, who goes under the alias of Jedi CT1, um, uh, who's, who's, who's been doing some amazing work when it comes to the crypto support in, 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 in Zig. He did open, um, I think it was him, he opened an issue for Bixer support. And he, he's got like a, almost like a manual what you need to add and tweak to make it work. It's not that much. Um, I'd hope, um, I would hope that we would um, get support before 0 0.7 or during the release, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, there is a couple of bits, plus we are still with at least stage one dependent on LVM. I'm pretty sure they also struggle as well. So, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, in any case, I would say my recommendation is um, if you're somebody in. So, I guess the, the problem is. Uh, well, uh, Jacob touched upon of these problems. Another uh, practical, like human problem, is that the zero seven releases um, has a has a set date. Uh, Andrew has to write the changelog, which is a, a massive task, and um, these plus uh, other things. Um, like it, it's not easy. Like there's the practical problem of actually merging the changes, right? Like, so even if we assume that the, 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 the code is there, there's also the, the practical problem of merging changes on time with a tight deadline. So um, if that doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world though, because uh, my recommendation is if you are invested enough in the Zig ecosystem, uh, stay, on, <laughs> stay on master, like download nightly builds from the website or uh, clone the repository and, and compile Zig yourself. It's not hard. Uh, if you have trouble with it, join a community, ask people how to do it. People will be happy to help you. So even, even in that case, um, don't worry. Don't, don't think of Zig as broken for the next six months until the next release happens. Yep. Well said. We'll definitely fix it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let's move forward. Next question from Suirad. Uh, how do you handle large growth of sections? Uh, do you order the sections ah, in a specific that's way? The question. So, do um, you wait? So, wait, there's the second part. Uh, okay. Do you order the sections in a specific way, like have the text section last so it can grow? Right. So, um, so the idea that, that's that, that's actually an excellent question. And um, even though I'm going to answer some like a little bit about this here, I do encourage you to have a look at um, the actual implementation and. It, doesn't really matter whether it's Maco or or L, for example, because this bit of code should be common to both. Um, so basically, yeah. So um, and it's I think Andrew's brilliant idea. Um, we do have some padding. It's heuristics. It's not. There's no real science behind it, but we do have some padding in the sense that, well, would so say we would need some. The ideal capacity would be some X. We do leave some room. To grow within a text block, and the text block is basically the um the bit that will have um for example a function like the the, the machine code for a function within itself um like 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 print as you saw or exit or something, and then if we change it like in an incremental fashion, if we still have some um space left, 
we're just going to reuse this block. So we don't have to grow, we don't have to move anywhere. But if we do, then yeah, basically what we do, we invalidate that um, symbol, that text block, and then we look for an, anyone. So we have, um, we have, the, the, so the logic we have for this is not too, it's not complex, it's quite tricky to get your head around. It's not complex and it's really cool. So we basically scan the file for the next available offset within a, um, for a new text block. However, so this is, uh, when it comes to Maho, <laughs> the, um, I, we, we cannot grow the text section yet. I didn't add this bit. There is an assert that if this is required, then we're just gonna panic because I didn't have time to add that yet. Um, unfortunately, this is either my um, lack of understanding of of how Maho works or because Maho is broken in a way it organizes um, segments and sections in the sense that when I look for expansion of the text section, I need to bear in mind that it has to be obviously for, uh, for uh, each segment has to be four kilobytes of the page, align, page aligned. Um, but the, the bad news is, for example, if we're gonna start overlapping a different segment like data, I cannot just move the segment after, like basically copy all the stuff after data because text segment has to stay first. So I'll need to um, wiggle a little bit in the sense that instead of moving text segment, I'll have to move everything below it to allow for growth, but we'll get to it, right? So, but this is an excellent question actually. Uh, I have a like a, a small follow up question uh, from that. You mentioned that you leave some uh, wiggle room uh, whenever you allocate uh, something like in mm -hmm. the text section and everything else. Uh, is this um, amount of extra space configurable? Um, currently, it isn't. I don't see why we would not have it mm -hmm. configurable. I'm pretty sure we would. Uh, we also have a couple of um, hints that we should get from. The compiler itself, for example, you know what 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 the expected program size is, or how many symbols we are expected to to receive. Um, currently, they are hard coded um, to some large enough values to actually allow for um, good experimentation. That's why. Mm -hmm. actually, um, let me. Can you share the screen? Sure, sure. Can you show sure. my? It's yeah, always showing. For a second. Can you can you guys see this? Yes. Yeah. So. So this is about the growth. In general, so this this bit of code is really simple. If we were to compile something similar um, with LVM, we would get a really small um, executable. But what we have here, if you have a look at was it hello, you can see that we have 368 kilobytes, and there is actually not much stuff in it. There is more zeros than there is actual code or actual mm -hmm. bytes for for stuff, and this is because we do pre-allocate a lot of stuff. We, we, we basically leave a lot of padding um, to allow for growth. Um, so for small executables, we do take a penalty in the sense that it's going to be a big exec executable, relatively speaking. But at the same time, we, you know, we, we won't run into um, the growth problem so quickly. Because LLVM, if you, if, if, if you, if you play with this um, yourself, you're going to see that um, LLD actually generates everything quite compressed. Um, whereas we do leave dot underscore or at least said coming in hot I made a terrible mistake sorry no please continue I made a terrible mistake I didn't disable text messages people send TTS sorry text to text to speech anyway sorry please continue that's okay so as I was saying for example with with the header and load commands the way we currently have it in Maco, we leave a lot of padding underneath it until, so so there is a lot of like zeros between um, the text section and the, and the load commands. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see this, but the load commands end at 2e0 plus 8 bytes, but we start the text, um, text section at 4 kilobytes, right? Right. Which is, yeah. So, that's why I mean, so cube. I'm still kind of like battling with this. I'm I'm not sure how to do it properly yet. That's that's my answer here. I, I uh, actually I spent a lot of time drawing stuff on paper when I was doing this, just trying to figure out what the heck. So so if you if anybody's got any ideas, then I'd, I'd be I'd 
it'll be cool. Um, I, I'd be happy to listen to them. Okay, yeah, I, I think that, well, this is all a, uh, as you were saying, like, this is all a, a new effort, so I, I'm, I'm sure a few things will be, uh, we'll discover them as also people start using and provide feedback on, on uh, what their experience is. And so um, I think we got all the questions uh, from Twitch chat. Uh, I don't think we have anything uh, elsewhere. I am not going to click into the voice channel because I don't want text to speech to start uh, making noise again. Somebody should answer the question of why is text to speech enabled when you are in streamer mode on Discord? This really boggles my mind. But anyway, sorry, this is my uh, production problems. Like t today, I was today years old when I discovered that text to speech still go still goes through streamer mode. Anyway, um, Soapston said, "Loris is mommy." Jesus. Okay, let's switch to a channel where he can't find me. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> sorry, Jack, you can't hear this, but like I I'm making too many mistakes today. Uh, production wise uh, okay your uh, sorry for keeping you so long in the q a i i I hope okay. It, it's okay okay I hope it wasn't too stressful uh, but I uh, uh, it, you know it was a it was a long presentation so, so yeah. you know a long q a is expected I think people uh really enjoyed it and like uh like they had uh, uh, reasonable questions uh for you so let me just answer one final question that um I think it's more for me than for you. Uh, and mm -hmm. then uh, I will uh, give you a moment if you want to say anything else and we'll move forward. So uh, this question is from Redline. Um, uh, the question is, uh, will there be a Zig release before 1.0 that acts as the, hey, this is pretty much stable wink wink release? And um, the answer, given what I know today, is that um, maybe to some degree, I would say not exactly with the, given what, how I, I interpret your uh the, the part of the question between quotes about uh, this is pretty much stable i don't think it will be exactly like that um but the plan is as we approach uh, as we get closer to 1.0 we will start releasing also minor versions uh that fix bugs for for features that we want to keep stable from the point of view of bugs not not of the interface so i would say that uh as long as zig is going to stay under 1.0 uh, you should expect potentially for uh, the syntax to change always. Not in practice, you, like you, you shouldn't expect Zig to be like to revolutionize the syntax completely from one day to the next. But being less, being lower than one point zero means that if there is reason to do so, we we are still going to do it. Right? We are not going to prioritize a retro compatibility over over fixing bad design decision. Uh, bad design decisions. So, um, but that said, uh, as we move forward, of course, uh, the design will become more and more solid, just like now today, you can like, your code tends to compile, there are still some changes, but it's not like dramatic. Um, but when it comes to bugs, we will do also minor releases for bugs. So right now, today, if there is a uh, annoying bug in version 0 0.7, for example, um, if it ends up being that Big Sur is not supporting version 0 0.7, that's how it's going to be for the full lifetime of 0 0.7. Um, but in the future, uh, for example, there's a feature that everybody wants, but it's still not working well yet, which are, which are packed structs. If we decide that packed structs are a feature that we want to support um, uh, from a, the point of view of fixing, prioritizing fix, uh, bug fixes, uh, we will make minor releases over the current stable version of the language, uh, which might be 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And uh, that is closer, I think, to what you are referring to, even though it's not exactly the almost stable release. I don't know wh when we are going to get there, uh, to be honest. Um, and with that, I would say, uh, Jacob, um, anything else that you want to add before we move no, forward? I think, no, I think, I think I got everything. So. Okay. By the way, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I really appreciate it, uh, as always. Well, and I'm on the hunt. Was it a t-shirt after three times? No? Yes. One talk. Yes, I'm on the hunt for that. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, again, thank you very much. It's been a great thank pleasure. You. Yep. Likewise. Thanks.